Hello, this is Dr. Rode. It's a freewheel hub motor. It can be used up to 10 speeds, but you need to widen the frame dropout to at least 142 millimeters. Please use a seven speed cassette. It is characterized by easy installation and exchange of sprockets. This is a freewheel hub body. It can be used with a high speed sprocket of 11 trillion. Generally, a 14 trillion freewheel is the fastest. Calculating spoke length. It is the most reliable method for measuring earth thickness. Install nipple heads on the spokes. Place it temporarily on the rim. Paint it using a marker pen. Measure only the remaining portion. Some rims have effective rim diameter information displayed. However, obtaining ERD information for most rims, including from the retailer or manufacturer's website, is difficult. This method is a measurement technique for cases where ERD rim information is not available. We will use gravity. We begin measuring the inner diameter of the rim from the valve hole. Insert the nipple onto the spoke in the direction of the head. Insert the nipple into the hole. Now mark the section where the nipple protrudes with a marker pen. Use vernier calipers. The measurement is 3.5 millimeters. Measuring the inner diameter of the rim becomes very easy. Erd equals 3.5 by 2 plus inner diameter of the rim. Add 7 millimeters. It's easy to understand, right? Erd 388. Effective rim diameter. This is the method for measuring hub motor axle length. Cut a sturdy paper and measure the width using a wheel truing stand. The hub width we are using this time is 145 millimeters. Done. 36 holes. Number of spokes. Spoke lacing pattern. One hundred forty three millimeters. If the hub is too large, you can do it like this. Cut the paper. Mark the distance between the farthest holes with a pen. It can also be used for measuring axle length. Use a caliper to measure the flange diameter. One hundred forty three millimeters. Non drive side flange diameter. Drive side flange diameter. Spoke hole diameter, 3 millimeters. Spoke hole diameter. First, check the rim center. Measure and record the width from the rim center to the center of the left spoke hole. Measure and record the width from the rim center to the center of the right spoke hole. Check the rim center. Measure the distance from the rim center to the left spoke hole and make a note of it. Measure the distance from the rim center to the right spoke hole and make a note of it. Wide rim three step spoke calculation process. 38 millimeters left. Non drive side to flange, 38 millimeters. 48 millimeters right. Drive side to flange, 48 millimeters. Accept click. Calculate click. Standard rim spoke length calculation is complete. Modify the lock nut to flange length on the non-drive side. Non-drive side spoke length calculation complete. Modify the lock nut to flange length on the drive side. 
drive side spoke length calculation complete. Install the spokes. This wheel utilizes the cross pattern, which is the standard method of inserting spokes into the flange by alternating left and right. Secure the hub motor to the wheel trimming stand. Next, let's check the spoke installation sequence. First, install the spoke from flange side A out to in direction. Jump from hole to hole and install the spokes. All spokes have been inserted. It's a 36 hole BMX rim. Place it in the truing stand. Check the valve hole and spoke holes. Check the hole direction. Install the first spoke next to the valve. Attach tags to the spokes, please. Jump three holes and install the next spoke. Second step, flange. B. Fit the spoke inwards from the outside. Install the spokes from the flange out to in direction. Install it next to the initially installed spoke. Jump one flange hole at a time and install the spokes. Install the spokes while jumping three holes. Repeat the same pattern for the next spoke as well. Third step, flange B, fit the spoke outward from the inside. This time install the spokes in this direction. Install all spokes in the empty holes. Flange out to in direction. Cross preparation is complete. Install the nipple heads on the spokes slightly. Turn the rim in a direction where it doesn't touch the spokes and valve. Mm -hmm. 
Ensure that all the nipples are visible. Most of the nipples have come off. Here's a one crozes non-overlap. Now, rotate the hub with the spokes installed in the opposite direction of the valve hole to create a cross pattern. It's a one cross pattern. Electric bicycles have shorter and thicker spokes, making overlap assembly difficult. For this wheel, we'll make it a non-overlap wheel. When the bike wheel spokes cross, the last spoke that meets does not simply pass by but needs to be overlapped and connected to make a sturdy wheel. However, electric bike spokes are very thick, so they just pass by without overlapping. This is the only difference between electric bike and regular bike wheel spoke building. Tighten the spokes leaving only one millimeters of thread. Drive side pattern is complete. Finally, the fifth step is to install the spoke in flange A outward from the inside. Install the spokes in the flange into out direction. Install the spokes in the empty holes. The spoke should pass through only one hole. Repeat this pattern. Be careful not to over tighten. Drive side pattern is complete. Tension the spokes, leaving a 1 mm thread. Tighten the nipples clockwise. Using a spoke wrench, you should be able to determine the start and end of wheel rotation while tightening the nipples. Attach a sticker-like tag to the spoke next to the rim valve hole. To tighten the spoke nipple, turn it clockwise. Tighten all the nipples while leaving a 1 mm spoke thread. Tighten the nipples equally and slightly increase the tension. Use the masking tape attached to the spokes as a reference for rotation. We start the left-right alignment while tightening the nipples. Firstly, we will explain the principle behind adjusting the rim left and right. By tightening the right drive side spoke nipple, the rim will move to the right. Conversely, 
Tightening the left non-drive side spoke nipple will move the rim to the left. It is important to note that over tightening the left spoke nipple can cause the rim to move too far. Releasing the nipple will cause the rim to move in the opposite direction. In summary, the principle is that the tension power balance of the left and right spokes moves the rim and aligns it to the center. We've reached about 80% of the target tension. Using a dishing tool during the process can save time. Adjust the initial left-right tolerance to be within 1 mm. Align only within approximately 1 mm left-right. It doesn't have to be precise at this point. Now, let's begin the vertical alignment. Secondly, let's take a look at how to align the rim up and down. By tightening the peripheral nipples together, the rim will move towards the hub. To move the rim in small increments, tighten or loosen the nipples at least 360 degrees. Loosening the surrounding nipples together will cause the rim to move away from the hub. Vertical alignment of the rim only works when the left and right spoke tensions are adjusted together. <laughs> 너무 다른 데하고 제일 많이 차이가 많이 나요. 풀어줘야 돼요. 너무 많이. 풀어줘요. If it is too tight and cannot be adjusted, you need to loosen the area where the rim is inserted in order to enable movement. Vertical alignment takes a lot of time. We've reached about 90% of the target tension. Adjust the vertical alignment tolerance to be within 0.5 millimeters. Be careful not to exceed the desired tension. Budget rims are not perfectly round. Be cautious. Precise alignment is nearly impossible with this. It causes too much tension rise. Budget rims have lenient tolerance applied at the weld bead. This is a high-end rim, so there is minimal deviation. Now, inspect the wheel center using a dishing tool. When assembling wheels, the center can become slightly miscellaneous due to errors in the wheel truing stand. To correct this, a tool called a wheel alignment gauge, or centering gauge, is used. First, let's set up the dishing tool on the non-drive side. Attach the gauge securely without any gaps. Now, fix the gauge in place. Move the dishing tool to the opposite position. The measurement shows a gap of about 4 millimeters. To calculate the rim displacement distance, 4 millimeters division by 2 equals 2 millimeters rim displacement distance. Now, we only need to move the rim by 2 millimeters. Adjust the position of the rim by tightening the left nipple once and loosening the opposite nipple once. This will allow the rim to move without changing the tension of the spokes. Before starting the job, label the spokes and check the starting and ending positions to ensure accuracy. Start the inspection again from the beginning.
there should be no gap on the drive side, and if the measurement distances on both sides are equal, the rim is perfectly centered. Make sure to perform centering inspection during the process. Check the position of the right measuring gauge. The left side is in the same position. This is the precise center position. Once again, align the wheel left and right, reaching 100% of the target tension. Check the overall spoke tension by hand making sure they're similar. If you have a tension meter, you can use it as well. However, meters are usually not suitable for short spokes. Only make adjustments to spokes that are too loose or too tight. Nipples won't loosen easily even if you don't tighten them too much. Don't worry. If you're building a wheel for the first time, there may be many trials and errors. Please follow the order of operations. 1. Left-right alignment 2. Vertical alignment 3. Centering 4. Left-right alignment. Experienced and inexperienced individuals have different work times. Perfect. If it loosens, you can tighten it later for adjustments. Be cautious of applying too much tension. Even if you build the wheel a bit loosely, the nipples won't come loose easily. Perfect okay. job. The next step is installing the rim tape. Wow. A beautiful is... wheel is complete. Subscriptions, likes, and comments are greatly appreciated as they greatly support video production. Thank you for watching.